calling the finance committee meeting to order on July 16, 2020. It is now uh, 2 34 p.m. And pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law section 30, section 18, this meeting of the finance committee is being conducted via remote participation. In order to um, satisfy open meeting law, I do need to ask each member of the committee um, to stay present when I call their name, which is a means of acknowledging that they can hear me and to show that we can hear them. So, um, Kathy Shane? Yes, I can hear you. Dorothy Pam? Yes. Lynn Griesinger? I can hear you. Uh, Pat DeAngelis? I can hear you. Uh, Bob Hegner? I'm here. <coughs> Mary Lou Talman? I'm here too. And I believe that Sharon Pavanelli <laughs> has not yet joined us. I I'm here. Know. I'm here. Oh, you are. Okay. <laughs> Sharon Pavanelli. Uh, that's why I said it, because I actually am not looking at a participant list. So um, all members of the committee um, are present. And I don't think that we need to um, convene a council meeting separately, because there is no quorum of the council itself. Um, the purpose of today's uh, meeting is in the agenda. Uh, to, we want to go uh, review and finalize our report, make our uh, recommendations on the matters that are um, in the report and before the committee uh, regarding the budget um, and uh, then allow for um, any public comment that might be present. I. Uh, We'll therefore um, stop sharing so that we can all be uh, present in the meeting and indicate uh, and also want to um, indicate that there's a draft that was sent to everyone of where we were on the draft report um, about an hour ago and it has been posted um, and is available on the town council website under the committee page in the packet for the uh, finance committee meeting. Um, so having um, gone through that, I think that what we are getting very close to is needing is to make um, get a motion um, that would be coming forward to approve the order <coughs> for the actual um, budget itself, and um, then uh, to see if there are any proposed amendments to the order um, is the sequence that we would naturally be going through. Um, so maybe we should get um, a motion out on the table and uh, Sonia, it's, um, I don't have it in front of me. It's 21, FY2106, is it? Sonia, you're not, you're muted. I can't hear you because you're muted. Andy, we need to have a sign that you just hold up. Yeah, Kathy, this is, Sonia's not getting herself unmuted to join Sonia, us. Sonia, you are muted. Can you unmute? There she goes. You don't want me unmuted. You just don't. Oh. Is, it, is it 06? It's 04B. 04B, OK. So what, what it would be as an initial motion would be um, somebody would need to make a motion that uh, the committee 
is recommending order FY2104 B as drafted in, um, in the committee packet. Um, and then uh, if it is seconded, then we will discuss whether there are any um, amendments. Does anybody want to offer, make that motion? Kathy has her hand up. Yeah, Kathy. I just had a, a question. I understand that's the motion. Um, would there be a way to first make a motion that we discussed yesterday, or does it have to come after you make a motion to do the whole budget, then an amendment to the whole that motion? I just, you know, I'm, I, I probably, after three years of being on the council, I'll know parliamentary procedure, but I am still trying to understand when you make a motion if it's a motion that we discussed for a couple hours yesterday. So I think, you need there, to make um, I think that the discussion, more of the discussion uh, just based upon yesterday's meeting, is probably going to be on the motion to amend. But what I was uh, planning to do um, is see if there's a motion to um, approve or adopt um, proposed order FY21 dash 04B, and then um, I was going to ask the town manager if he had any recommended um, language to use that would achieve the goal that was discussed in yesterday's meeting. And um, at that point, um, you or anyone else on the committee um, who is a, a, a council member of the committee could make a motion to amend the um, order or to take whatever other action subsequently um, uh, the town manager might suggest, but it would seem that getting the order out there might be helpful. Kathy, do you still want your hand up? Uh, no, I can take it down. So. Okay. Andy, remember, I can't put my hand up. Yeah, do you want to be recognized, please? Sure. Then. Let's start it. I make a motion we recommend to the town council the adoption of the manager's budget as reflected in, give me the numbers again, Sonia. 2104B. 2041. 21. 21. 21. 2104B. 04B. And is there a second? Somebody, uh, somebody who's on the committee as a um, council member would have to second. Second. Okay, so there is a second. Now I'm going to ask, um, if I may, the town manager, uh, because what what was presented and discussed substantially at yesterday's meeting. I don't have to go into great detail about this because I'm gonna leave that to the person who's doing it was a proposal that we come up with a mechanism that would um, freeze hiring of two positions for reasons that the maker of that motion, if there are a proposal can state. Um, uh, but I don't, uh, I think that Mr. Bachman was going to consider um, mechanisms that would achieve the result and that he was going to put that forward. And then um, it is obviously the discretion of a counselor as to whether they wanted to um, propose an action in accordance. Uh, Mr. Bachman. Uh, thank you, Andy. So what I wanted what I want to make sure that I think I understand what the council is saying is that the council is saying there, the chief has said there are two vacancies upcoming in the next six months, that those two positions not be filled while we explore alternative methods of delivering certain services to the public that are now being served, offered by through the police department. And that we hold those two, filling those two positions in abeyance until we do a serious study of how we want to provide those services in a potentially different way. Um, and I'm committed to doing that. And um, and 
the chief is agreeable to that as well. Um, so how you want to form that, if you want that to be part of a motion, part of the statement that the finance committee um, says, um, you know, I don't know how you want to how you want to proceed if you want to take an explicit motion on that or not. Um, I mean, I think that by stating it here, you incorporating it into your report um, and you hold me accountable on that, you know, you um, through goals or whatever, however process you want to do. Um, and that's the process that I think would be the most logical to move forward on. I think if I'm under, if I'm hearing the council right, what they're saying, what you're saying is, we are we are serious about this. This is a source of revenue. Um, if we if we delete this amount from the budget, it presents a problem, according to Sonia, that there is then no money to work with. Um, whereas if we put this money there, then there is money to work with for an alternative method of delivering the services. And I can tell you that um, in terms of looking at this, I think I said this yesterday, the, the, the leadership of the police department, the public health director are all interested in looking at these different models out that are out there. And I think I mentioned Albuquerque, Denver, there's, again, there's um, Asheville we talked about. So there, I think there are models out there, but, and I think it's wise to investigate them and not just to say, we're going to do something um, but be clear that this is a mandate from the from the council. Okay, I have two councilors who would like to speak and may have questions, so I'm going to take them uh, in the order that they raised their hands. Kathy. Um, yeah, I, I'm unmuted. Uh, I would like to make it as a motion because if we have the motion on the floor is to adopt the town manager's budget as presented, it would have all positions be filled. So I think we need to do it as a formal motion. Um, and uh, I kind of wrote down, as you quickly said what you said, Paul, um, you know, I don't usually think of paragraph long motions, but I, I, it's uh, um, making a motion that two vacant positions in the police department not be full, filled, hold um, those two positions over at least the next six months while deliberation on different models and composition of policing can be considered. You know, so I was just gonna state of why we're holding them mm -hmm. uh, a little bit long. So I made it uh, can be considered. Um, and then, so I, I have a, so that's, it's two parts. One, I, I would like to do it as a formal motion and get a vote on it so we get a sense of the committee. Secondly, um, I'm fine with that wording. I mean, to me, you know, I, it was great that Sonia explained budget impacts and, and consequences yesterday. To me, if we don't fill them for up to six months, there's money in the budget. The budget has been budgeted as if they would be filled, you know, knowing that they weren't going to be filled on day one of the vacancy. So there's some lag between it opens up. So does that mean, um, so this is purely a question. Does that mean that if you had put in the budget FTEs at 48 for a full year, there's actually uh, quite a bit of money, you know, so if, if half a year went by before you filled a position, you still have a full year worth of salary in the budget and benefits. It would, that would be a correct interpretation. Yes. Yes. But be aware that sometimes when positions are unfilled, they have to fill those positions with overtime. Yeah. So if there's a vacant, if there's a, a shift that's not filled, they bring somebody back a time and a half to fill that shift. Right. I was thinking about that yesterday, that, that um, it's not that whatever amount of money that might be would be potentially being drawn down by overtime mm -hmm. um, in the this six, six month period. Yep. So, that, so that was my first question about this. And the second, I changed it over at least the next six months because I'm not sure how long mm -hmm. this discussion will go on. Um, is that okay to leave it you know, so that to me says, 
at least six months, you know, so it's uh, from now until January, um, whatever the six month period is. Is that wording okay? So, so I think you want to convey some urgency about doing this, right? right. And so you don't want to say, take as long as you want, and right. then come back in June of next year. I mean, I think right. the whole point on this is to say, let's get on this. And I think that's a real, we want you want to convey some urgency um, on that. So um, how you do that, you could, so. Um, okay, so I, I would somehow. be happy to get a sense um, I just changed it to say, suppose it takes seven months, but I would be also be happy to put six months to say we've got a, a time limit on it, the way you stated it with, mm -hmm. you know, in six months, we will be hearing again what, what the ideas are. That would be fine with me if we think we can have that kind of telescoped process with, um, so I'm, I'm gonna stop talking because Pat had her hand up, just I wanna hear her thoughts on this too. <laughs> In essence, I don't really have anything else to add. I think um, I would like to see the amendment. I don't want to pass the budget without it. Um, uh, I would I'd very much like it to be there. Uh, and I think a, a deadline of January 31st, uh, 2021 would give us some real impetus. So I don't really have anything to add to what Kathy said. Okay. So um, I have a suggestion which should goes backwards on what I said originally. But if the goal is to have a motion about not filling positions, but not but it is not an actually a motion to reduce the budget. Um, do you feel that you would like to have that motion voted on before we vote on the budget motion itself? Um, as I said, I, you know, in terms of, I'm fine either way. I just would like to make sure this paragraph gets in, and then in the report, we explain the reasoning behind it. So there, it's got two parts. You see it right at the very beginning of the thing you've drafted, Andy. You know, so that we're voting on the whole budget with this amendment to it, and it's then not later, an amendment to the budget, I think, is the problem because. It's not affecting the budget. What I was thinking is, is that what we probably want to consider, and, but I'm going to ask uh, Paul if, or if he wants to comment on this, is that I think what we would want to consider is a separate motion that is recommended by this committee. And um, I think that when it comes to the council meeting, it may, you know, I think the order has to be considered there too that um, the, but the motion would ultimately is that um, we are recommending that the council um, urge or direct, I can't, I'm not gonna pick the verb, the town manager to not um, fill two vacant positions for and then you have to finish it out. Um, I'm not going to word your motion. I, I want you to well, word your motion. Can I just add, you know, here's the way I think, I'm not saying it would go this way, but by freezing the two positions, we're not endorsing 48 in the police department right now. And that's what's proposed in the budget book. So that's why I think it is amendment to it. We think we put the people in the police department, but suppose we put them in the XYZ department. I don't, you know, so I, you know, so it's, it is an amendment to the budget as proposed, Andy, I think, rather than just a, um, you know, so, you know, this clearly, you know, since I started yesterday and Sonia explained why the just cutting the police department by two FTEs wasn't a good way to go. And it made sense when that uh, explanation came in. So I'm not sure why I understand this isn't an amendment to, but nowhere in the budget book does it say anything about the police not filling two of the 48 positions. Um, so that's, I just don't understand why it wouldn't be an amendment to the budget. Um, 
Can I? Sorry. Yeah. Yes, Sonia. I'm just I'm a little confused as to why we're putting it into a motion or having it be uh, order or anything because the minutes are going to reflect that the town manager has agreed to do that the reports reflecting that I mean that is making a statement. If you put it in a motion it doesn't really set it in stone or anything, you can still go back and ask for another motion to reverse that motion later, so I guess i'm just not understanding the whole practice of this and setting the precedence of doing this. It makes no sense to me. I'm sorry, I'm a common sense person. And it's just. <laughs> I, I, I would like to see us, because if we froze those two positions, we functionally reduced the budget by two full-time positions for a period of six months. Right. So, so what I would like to see is a motion to reduce the budget as presented by the town manager by that amount. Um, and whether or not, uh, and then it would be up to him if he wanted to move it into some other fund that could be held for either staffing EMS or, or police department or, or whatever, I don't know. But for me, um, I guess in my common sense way, Sonia, I'd like to see, and it's not about trusting Paul or trusting the council. It's just like, it would be uh, there in, it would be a clear statement and it would be a statement while only a token, it would be supporting the kind of um, intentionality of the people who have come forward to defund 52%, which I'm sorry, I think is absolutely crazy. I would never do that. Um, but there's a way in which I think this needs to be a symbolic act. Um, and I'm comfortable with that. Okay. Um, Dorothy, I do see your hand up, and uh, I'm not sure if Lynn is seeking to be recognized, too. Um, the question that I would ask um, Paul and Sonia to think about and come back to either now or in a couple minutes is, is there a way um, to not reduce the budget, but for the council to direct money to go into a specific budgeted reserve, say under general government, so it's not under uh, community services, that keeps the money, so that the money is available. Um, I think we always have to remember that if we reduce the budget um, as a whole, then we're reducing taxation and we can't get the money back without going to reserves. But if we put it, if we can put it into a reserve, um, that um, and direct that the positions not be filled, then at least the money is available without having to go into um, further into reserves. My understanding is we cannot do that, and we can we can say we don't want the money there, and then Paul can choose to either to do what you're saying, but we can't as the council. Lynn has her hand up. I, and I do too. Hello. Dorothy, I'm sorry. And Dorothy has her hand up. So take Dorothy first, but then okay. I have a suggestion. Lynn has uh, suggested that I ask Dorothy first. So Dorothy. Okay, I just would like to bring this back to what I thought Paul was saying. He wasn't using the word freeze. He said held in abeyance. We have often found we had more money um, in a department because there was an unfilled position. So unfilled positions in the budget is not something new. Um, so I don't think I want to reduce the budget. And I, we're not really talking about reducing services. We're talking about some redirecting, perhaps, of services. Um, I don't want to have it just, and I'm really very pleased with your statement, Paul. Uh, I think it's very good. But I think it's important that the Finance Committee make it clear that it supports this position and that the town council does too and that the town manager has independently also come forward to say he sees this as a reasonable way to go. So I am not an expert in uh, Robert's rules, but uh, I would support Kathy making a motion um, that we, um, using Paul's words, uh, hold these positions, I guess, in abeyance and um, and I believe the rest of his sentence was very good too, um, that we would uh, figure out how, how we would redirect 
this in terms of delivering services after the process which has been started and or which is underway. I'm not saying it's started, but it's going to be started very soon. So have I restated that correctly, Paul, or do you need to correct me in some ways? Um, well, I'm eager to hear what Lynn has to say too, but I think, I think we're all, it's just a matter of how we get there. I think we're all on the same page. It's a matter of what's the best way to get there. And I think what, what Sonia would like is a clean appropriation motion because that's something that actually gets it as a transactional document that we give to the Department of Revenue and stuff. And if it's got these other things on it, you know, you never know who's, you know, the, the bond councils or whoever has to look at these things. You just, you just like have a clean appropriation statement. So sometimes they have signing statements um, that where you have a motion, standalone motion that says, we move that uh, our approval of this is based on this understanding, uh, an explicit understanding with the town manager that the two, the two anticipated upcoming vacancies um, will be held and will not be filled um, and funds will not be spent uh, until the town has fully explored and you know come up with an alternative way of produ providing these services, something like that. Oh, I was not muted. Sounds very good to me. Thank you. Right. So, uh, yeah, Lynn, go ahead. Understanding is that according to the charter, we have to be specific about program and so i'm not opposed to this amendment i'm just trying to figure out how to do it that's really where i'm coming from okay um and i'm trying to get as clean a path to the state side but as clean a message to the of our intent okay so the and at the same time maybe what we should do is pass and is remove the initial motion off the table table it and go to a motion about the freeze and then go back to this and say subject to that motion or something I, i'm trying paul i've been trying to figure this out since i i if I may, Andy, I, I think there are two actions. I think you need one to make the statement that's clear, explicit to everyone, and it stands there. And it actually, so it sounds like what the count, what the finance committee is saying is we want to vote on something. We want it to be that. We don't want to just have a nod of the head and a, on a Zoom meeting. We want actual something in writing that we can point to. And then we also need, we understand we have to make the appropriation vote as well. So I think that's, that's one way to, to say there's two actions happening, and that one is dependent on the other. Right. Uh, Andy, may I speak? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I've, I uh, feel comfortable with um, a signing motion as long as it's clear and explicit. I think Paul's saying the approval of this budget is based on the understanding, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I would be all right with that. Kathy? I'm with Pat and and now I just need, is this called an amendment? Is this called a condition? You know, it's, it's trying to find the words of what this thing is, right? It's, uh, you had a nice, it's, uh, it's like a codicil. You might think of a will. It's got this, by the way, <laughs> you've got to behave the following way. And I don't think uh, budgets have codicils on them, but um, so just it's not, you're saying it's not an amendment to the budget, it's a condition, it's approval conditional on the following, and then we have that paragraph. So, um, so I guess the motion would be uh, to make it conditional that we have agreed on the following, we and the town manager, and then blah, 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 all the words you just said. Um, you know, I'm just, whatever we need to do that uh, creates those words and has people understand what they are. Um, 
Dorothy, did you have more to say or was your I just could say I second that motion. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't have a quick quiet because I want to make sure that we get yeah, we first of all we have to withdraw the other motion, which i we can get to in a minute. What I'm trying to do is see if we can come up with how it is um uh, we're exactly gonna word it and um Sonia. then I see your hand up, Sonia. Um uh, and then uh I think what I'm gonna do is ask to withdraw the original motion and um, take up this motion first and then come back to the original motion, get it re remade at that point. Uh, Sonia, what I'm were you thinking? Just to make sure this is a separate order from this finance order because putting motions like this without actual dollar amounts, and you really don't wanna put dollar amounts in it, without actual dollar amounts, you're gonna, um, you're gonna muck up the works for getting tax rate sets and stuff like that. So I don't want, to mess with the financial order. That's fine. Because we're not doing dollar amounts, so I just want it to be separate. And all we're saying is two positions. Right. And we're not taking them out of the budget. We're saying they will not be filled. We're freezing two positions. But it doesn't belong in the financial order is what I'm saying. No, we're not making it a part of the order. Is we're it trying to come up. We're trying to come up with a separate motion that um, we're offering in addition. But is, is there a significant difference between the word holding in abeyance and freezing? Yes. Is it, okay. So Paul suggested in abeyance, and is there a, a real specific reason behind that? I, I'm sorry. Maybe, Paul, you have a reason for saying in abeyance. I didn't. <laughs> Can I suggest, Andy, that I put a Word document up on the screen and we try to see these motions? Okay. Okay. So, Kathy. Okay. I, I can read you a beginning to it, and then I'm going to just add what I thought were Paul's words. So can you see this? Yes. So, I, okay. it would be, I make a motion that approval of the budget is conditional on agreement. agreement. So I, I don't want to interrupt. I think we talk about whether it's a recommendation and also I, I don't think when we think about the, what the council does, they, I don't think the council can vote a, condi a conditional budget. Not a, yeah. So I, we just have to think about the wording. I think the finance committee can recommend that what you were just talking about, but I don't think they should say that the council only approved the budget based on this conditional I don't know, we just have to think about how it's worded because I, I don't believe it'll be legitimate if the budget vote by the council is contingent upon the town doing something later on. Yeah, no, I think you have a good point, Sean, because what I think we're trying to, to in a way, craft is more important than the motion of this committee right now is the motion that we're recommending that the council adopt. Ah, yeah, okay. Well... So um, I just sent you some words, Lynn, if you want to look at your email, it might help with this. Thank you. You might be able to just be pasted into this actually. I can. To recommend that the town council approve the budget. Yeah, so I had the original one you had, that two vacant positions, but it's better if we copy and paste your words in. I write fast, but not always accurate. <laughs> Am well, I sharing the document? You are sharing it. Okay, let me just, okay. So here's what Paul just sent in. The approval of the budget is made with the explicit understanding with the town manager. The two upcoming anticipated vacant positions in the police department's budget will be held in advance, not allocated or spent until the Town manager has fully explored an alternative manner of providing services and presents presented his findings to the council. Okay, so what we talked about was on, on until um, January 31st. Yeah, I did add that. So allocated or spent until January 31st. 
first, 2021. I think it should be before January, not until. Be, right. Thank you, Pat. <clears throat> There's a phrase from Andy's report uh, talking about um, enhancing efficiency and effectiveness. Um, which no, I think this is much more, I mean, we have this, uh, alternative manner of providing services. So this is uh, different models, it's composition. So this, this wording says all of that, I think. The other thing I wondered about uh, that I mentioned to you, wanted to make sure that clear that there, we, that there was no one in the pipeline, there was no one in police academy expecting one of those positions, that That's we're true. not cutting anybody who is in the department. In the wording, in the report, Dorothy, we can say that because okay. we had a good discussion. It be in the motion, but it should be, yes. Because that I mean, we, some people, we are not cutting the services and we're talking about reconsidering um, alternatives of providing the services and we're not cutting. I think some services will be cut while those, potentially, if you listen to the chief yesterday, there is mm -hmm. a potential for uh, some reduction in service while this is going on, if those two positions aren't filled for a month or six months or a year or ever, it does affect the number of people you have. I don't want to pretend. But I also, I'm having, Paul, I, I have so much respect for you, so, and it probably has to legally be that way, but there's something in here for me about, um, is made ex with the explicit understanding with the town manager, um, until the town manager has fully explored. And, it, uh, right. and I, I guess that's the wording it might need to be, but somehow or other it feels to me like it needs to be the town manager, the town and the town council and community members or something. Right, right. But maybe not. I mean, I, you know, I'm not gonna hold to that. I'm just... Mm -hmm. I mean, you could make it broader and just say the town until the town has fully explored. If you yeah, want would, to. yeah, that would feel better. Very yeah. nice. I, get I, that. I, yeah, that, that saves having to ask, add every actor that we might. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> May I interject? Who's that yeah. um, I feel like if you say, this is Sharon, um, if you say the town, then that's no one. It's everybody and it's also yeah. no one. Um, and I think what people are looking for is uh, to be taken seriously and to have accountability. Um, that, that's my two cents on changing that from the, uh, maybe the town manager is not the right word for a person, but the town seems to be too mm. vague and yeah. large. So would you go back, Sharon, to the town manager, the town council, and community members, or? I, I, I haven't, um, I mean, I'd have to think about that, but I, it, to me, I'm, I'm just, my inclination is to just have some entity in there. Um, yeah. I think that, I actually think that looks a lot better. I agree, Sharon, that the this isn't someone's going to go off and study it and come back with, without a, a discussion. One other thing. I, mean, I, oh. Sorry, go ahead, sure. uh -huh. I was just going to say the the last sentence. I'm not saying there. It doesn't. I'm not thinking there won't be something that's brought forward to the town council, but this sort of assumes that no matter what happens, something will be brought forward for approval to the town council. Hmm. Um. It, I, I don't know, maybe that's the right language. It just seems to me that we would explore it and then there would be a presentation to the town council of something, but we don't know what we're gonna find or what's gonna be recommended. So to assume that we're gonna present something for approval at this point, it seemed to potentially set us up for something that couldn't happen, I don't know. Yeah, and we might, yeah, it might not be ready for approval.
you could say with a report back to the town council by January 31, 2021. You know, the if if it didn't say and an alternative, explored alternative uh, manners or alternative options, then it's you know it's the an says we we have one best way. Um, mm -hmm. So taking the word an out yep. of before alternative land, mm -hmm. then it's mm -hmm. that we're talking about what kinds of things could be done. Yeah, yeah. So now we're focused on this piece. Yeah, and presenting to the town council or reporting them to the town council or something along those lines. By a date certain. Right, which is what we do often. Yeah, I, I like the idea of putting the date at the end because it's a little vague right now. Mm -hmm. it be, I mean, you could we could have this done by November 10th, you know. Um, that would be lovely. <laughs> no, I'm just saying we're, you know. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we. He, the wording was, and submit a report by January 31st. So this right. is, you no it, later than. It could be no yeah. later than January. Yeah, no later than, yeah. And maybe maybe sooner that would be good. Yeah. Yes. The word doesn't like the length of that sentence. <laughs> oh my god, no. It is slightly run on. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually the line sometimes you just need to get it out and clean it up. <laughs> when to say I ignore it's going to allow me to ignore it once. There you go. <laughs> A little extra space here. Okay. The motion is to recommend to the town council the that of the budget. We need that the approval. The, I'm just that the is like we need that right in front of the budget. No, go, go back no, no that the approval of the budget after town after council. town council. Right. To recommend to the town council that the approval of the budget is made with the explicit understanding with the town manager. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Two upcoming that two upcoming anticipated vacant positions in the police department's budget will be held in abeyance, not allocated or spent, till the town manager, town council, and residents have fully explored alternative options providing services, and those are presented to the town council no later than July 31st, 2001. Okay, so that could make that a separate sentence. You, the last part could be a separate sentence, but I think it probably should be a separate sentence because originally when we talked about January 31st, 2021, it was that's how long the funds would be held in abeyance for. Right. And now, and now we're saying this is when the report will be by. So mm -hmm. it, I, I, I would yeah. suggest that. I'm sorry. Go, go Sharon. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Paul, just let me just throw this in really quickly. Um, is it uh, is it within the purview of this motion to also um, uh, you know go one step further and say uh, this whatever process happens, whatever we decide will be uh, implemented in the next budget cycle. Um, for me, I feel like that's what that would be. Uh, a key thing if I was on if I was on the other side of this issue of wanting this done right now um, it would in some way uh, I think encourage me to know that it would be in the next next budget cycle not that we're going to talk about it not that everybody's going to get together because you know that's done all the time but that hey we are really taking this seriously and we're going to get this done by the next budget cycle, whatever it is. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know whether that's the purview here of this motion. Um, I, I, th I think off. the I think the intent of holding the two positions vacant is to have funds to be able to implement something this FY21 year, not FY22. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe maybe that should be. Um, is that is that explicit in this? I mean, are people going to understand that? The only problem is that if we can't come to a final conclusion, um, 
it, it, that make that almost says we have a we already know what the plan is and i think we need to leave this open because for example one of the options may be that we come up with a way to contract for 24 7 365 backup counseling services and that's not a position it's a contract Mary Lou, you've had your hand up. Mary Lou? You know, if Mary Lou's. Um, let me check. Having problems because there's. There, there. The little sign came up. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, this says yes. to me that regardless of the plan we come up with, let's say a social worker and a nurse, that the money is coming out of the police department. Regardless, which means they will be down two more people. Um, that is concerning Can because I? as as Sharon was saying, if it were looked at in terms of the FY22 budget, then it could be placed appropriately where it would belong. And I had, you know, I've been thinking about this. Let's say you wanted a social worker. Well, you might share that with the senior center because this person isn't going to be on the road all the time. Uh, with the police. Um, what about a nurse? That could be part of the um, public health. So we may want to, you know, put more money into those areas so that they can share as a multi-department uh, approach to, to these issues. But this really says, regardless of what we come up with, it's you're down to police officers. And that to me is troubling. May I speak? Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes. Interesting, by the time we get to January 31st, we will know whether or not we really need to take this money here or we might have surplus elsewhere. Oh. At that point, Paul could come back and say, here is what I recommend. Here is where the money is. I have this much surplus because we've tighten their belts or we've gotten X. And at the same time, he could say, therefore, I would also like to go ahead and fill these two police positions. That's an option. That, that's good because we have been told that some services would be reduced if they don't get these two officers. Uh, and that should be of concern. Yeah. Um, Kathy, mm -hmm. I think we will have today is whatever in July, it's getting near August. We're going to have August through December experience. You might find, I'm not saying you will find, but you might find adding one back, or they've rearranged services in such a way, or there are all sorts of possibilities. I think this leaves. This wording leaves open what we would then do. And I do not think that FY22 will suddenly have more money available to us to add staff, total people working for the town. Maybe, maybe it will. That would be lovely. Um, so I think this gives us a time period to say what happens um, to the way the police department operates. Meanwhile, we're saying how, what are other ways of doing it? So I'm, I'm extremely comfortable with this because I'm, I'm hearing uh, from people and not the same people we were, that we've heard do testimony that we spend a lot on police and some of the work might be, the same work might be able to be done by other people 
for potentially less money or equivalent. So I, I think this leaves all options open. So can I ask a question, of Andy? Uh, for the sake of discussion, I, I'm more than willing to withdraw my original motion for the moment, but are we going to come back and then make just a straight clean motion about the budget? Um, well, I think it, uh, in the end, we have to come back and approve the budget. Um, if everybody's in agreement, um, then Kathy can tell us whether she's comfortable with passing the, the motion that's on the floor um, or would like to have the motion from the floor withdrawn until this motion is passed. But, um, I'll leave that to her decision at the time. But I'd like to get the wording of the motion fully understood is because we're doing good work on it and that's where we should keep going. And um, I guess I have one thing to comment to, uh, oh, I thought you had said earlier that there could be a possibility that some funds would have to be spent on overtime, lease overtime. This would not allow the expenditure of any additional funds on overtime. That's a good point, yeah. Can I ask a question? And that, I don't think this says that. Sorry, Sonia, go ahead. But this just says that the two positions will be held. Yeah. Up. It doesn't say that. Anything we'll, about overtime. Yeah. Um, Can I ask a dumb question? Are we saying we can't go ahead and study this and figure out what we want to do without holding the police department's budget ransom for it? I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't get this. It feels like we're holding them, we're, har we're har harming their budget to do this, and this is a great thing to do, but why does it have to be on the police department's backs? I, I just don't get it. I really don't. I have to leave that to Kathy or somebody else to respond to. I, I think there's been a question raised and then we're seeing uh, thoughtful people look at, do we have more police than we actually need? Because police, not that the services aren't needed, but police themselves may not be the best people to be delivering those services to us. So I that that. And I understand you want to find another way to deliver those services, but are you saying the police budget is over, over um, budgeted and- I will, I'm raising uh, my hand uh, here. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's, these vacancies provide an opportunity to hold some money and the, if we were a different composition, they might well be hired into the police department and they've already got parking attendants. They've got people that aren't formally um, through the academy. So I don't know what we might call them, community. Parking attendants are part of the transportation fund, so they don't even come out of the uh, police budget, so. Right, but they sit on that little tree of. But they, but they are budgetarily, they're not there. Right, but, but you could. I don't think there are anything, maybe unless I don't understand this, can a police budget only hire someone who comes out of the police academy? I can't answer that. Can I add my two cents here? I did have my hand officially raised. I know, I know. Uh, we were, I was trying to get that. Okay. I was going to get back to you, but just go ahead, Dorothy. Right. I just want to say that um, what we never asked the police department for was when we heard their extensive presentation, how many hours are spent on um, a policeman uh, going, they never go out once, they go out in twos and sometimes threes to answer some of these um, mental health or wellness checks. Um, how many hours are spent on that? I, I'm not talking about cutting services to the police. I'm talking about um, rearranging some things. Some of the services that the police are doing would be done by um, health personnel, and then they would then have freed up hours to do the things that we want them to do. So I, I do not see how it is necessarily that we would have a cut in services. And I think that's a great thing to study, but to me, you're holding the police department's budget. You're holding them hostage in order to do that. Well, how are we going to do it and when? I mean, this is, 
this is the time in which we're supposed to be mm -hmm. rethinking and looking at things. Sometimes we don't choose the time. I mean, we were happily doing our budget. And then, you know, a, it became the time to really look at police budgets and policing. And we have a great police department, but how could we better like serve the people? The police department to me. Sorry, Sonia, I didn't hear I'm going back to the to the loop. I'm talking as a resident right now. It just feels like you are holding them hostage for this. It, it doesn't feel right. Uh, apparently, Paul talked to them and they could live with this. So, um, what else are they going to say? <laughs> <laughs> um, Mary Lou. Um. <laughs> You know, and the old finance committee, I was on there a while, and the departments came and spoke to us for about an hour apiece. And I've seen how this department has grown. It always wants to be many steps ahead of regular policing. And they brought on people to help with the domestic violence. Um, and they didn't get money from the town. They went out and got a grant. They write grants themselves. And, and I guess I really do feel they're being targeted. Um, I, I do believe we do need to look at those issues that have been brought to the council, absolutely. <clears throat> but I go along with the FY22 budget where you can look where it fits, I would say appropriately. And if indeed it, it is a police officer that has a social um, worker background, that would be great and we could fill that position that way. But right now, Regardless of how well we praise the police department, the community at large is going to see it as some of them as targeting for whatever the reason, but basically because a couple of groups have come to us and, uh, and have some issues which, uh, you know, uh, they see and they're important to address. And I think you're doing that. I think the council can say, look, we're looking at this. We, we need to look at this, we're going to have this study, we're going to have it done. In the meantime, we're going to go forward with, with our budget as is, and we will look at places next year where some of these positions would fit in. And indeed, it may be police, it may be uh, sharing some uh, services, as I say, with senior center or public health, but I'm really concerned about the message, and I think it's, it has to be demoralizing to the police department. They, ha they work so hard. They do these long weekends, which the chief told us a couple years ago, they don't like to do, but he said, you will do it because we need it done. So a department that has worked very hard, as, as um, I would say all the departments in town do, our experience in over 50 years in this town says this town is very well run by people who love the town and, and, and do everything they can for it. But I am concerned. Um, I, in conscience, I don't think I could vote to support, uh, not vote because I can't, um, but, but give you the support of anything other than the manager's budget as written, because I do think we, we need to explore the issues, but we need to look ahead and put it in the FY 2020 budget, which will be July, only 11 months from now, without appearing to target a, a great police department. I'm going to recognize Pat. Um, I am targeting the police department, um, and not because they are bad people or I think that they're bad police. Um, I had a long conversation with my brother who was a police officer um, and about the kind of impact bad policing has on every officer, every citizen, every, but it, so what I'm targeting is funding funding an organization that has in Amherst currently unintentionally targeted people of color because our residents target people, our white residents target people of color. They target homeless people, not every resident, but these, 
I'm sorry. Um, these kinds of things are happening. And I feel like it's the turn of a community of color to call some of the shots. And right now the shot is eliminate 52% of the funding for the police. I couldn't do that to this department, uh, but I can take away these positions. And I know it's a token gesture. And I can make that token gesture as long as we are committed to really looking at our police and lo really looking at EMS and fire who have been understaffed for years. And that didn't, hasn't come forward very much and, and by residents and st stuff. So is there a way that we have men and women in the fire department who are demoralized because they're not funded? I think that we need to, I, I know I'm rambling and I apologize. This is really complex. Um, I am targeting the police and I target them with respect. And, be, and I say that the voice of the community of color right now is the voice I need to listen to. And as much as I can, I have my limits too. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think any of that was helpful, but um, it was helpful, Pat. It was helpful. And sorry okay. about the phone calls. I'll mute myself. Um, I have to step out for a second. To, we have a friend who just got diagnosed with cancer, and I've got to tell Carol to call her. I'll be right okay. back. Uh, Mary Lou, your hand is up. I didn't know if you were. No, it you had I I uh, spoke before. Yeah, I'm, you, I'm all I, set right now. Okay, thanks. Just wanted to make sure. So, um, I think that we're still on the motion, and you know, part of it is, I think was very well said by Pat that. Concern has been expressed by the community, whether we agree with their, with all of the spokespeople, what they said or what they recommended isn't the question. The question is whether there are pieces of what has been presented to us, both in the, that hearing and well before, that require um, us to take some action as a council, and is this the appropriate action? Um, I guess that the only words that I would uh, um, at least want to focus on is held in the uh, not allocated or spent um, doesn't allow any increase in the part time budget if that becomes necessary. Right, that, I think we need to change, find some different words there. Um, but otherwise, I just, still, um, I, I think that the, you know. So maybe we need to make it more clear that it's it's not the police department's budget will be held in abeyance or not allocated, not allocated or spent. It's, it's the positions. It's two specific positions. So I yeah, think we, yes, maybe yes. that's what we need to make clear if it's yeah. not clear enough now. Mm -hmm. again, the budget will the other rest of the budget will have changes there will be overtime there mm -hmm. it's it's really those two positions that we're saying are the funding associated with those two will not be spent right can you just put a period after the word ab abeyance does that still <laughs> that two vacant positions will be held in abeyance um i mean i yeah <laughs> right? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And if you needed to, you could say not filled. You know, we're not filling them. Um, but that's that's what we're saying, right? We're not going to fill these two positions. Oh, but I, Paul, Paul came up with this very elegant word, abeyance. <laughs> so. Yes, I think flexibility is important. Paul has his hand up. Yep. Paul? 
So I, I think, you know, held in abeyance is confusing to people. So let's make it an easier, easier English. Let's say shall not be filled. That's much clearer. People understand what that means. And also, I think um, we need a, uh, I think, I don't think it's two sentences. I think it's, uh, we need an until um, word in there. Um, until the mm -hmm. town manager and council, blah, blah, blah. Um, because I, I, otherwise it's a statement that they will not be filled. I'm not right. sure that's what we're saying. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And do we take out town council here? Well, just don't take it out yet. Yeah, but Lynn, you, you need to take out the held. Yeah, but will be held. Will yeah. not be filled. <laughs> yeah. Yes, <laughs> well, whatever, we'll something filled. there. Absolutely. <laughs> That's great. Will be filled. Will, will not, not be filled. Will not, will not back in there. Okay. And then you, you could put until um, until January 31st. I mean, if we want to, you know, no, until. No Mm. Until um, the the re, until report be, uh, until the town manager reports to the town council by January thirty first, and then you could say that they're they're fully exploring. So it's we're trying to make it they're not going to be filled over the next six months, is the way Paul mm -hmm. <laughs> originally <Yeah>. said. <laughs> uh, I still feel like it needs to say with the town count. The, in consultation with the town council and residents of Amherst. Yep. yep. I think that should be in there. That was easy. <laughs> I think that, so do we, So this now the semi if we don't break it into two, the semicolon needs to come out. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> This is the yeah. definition of writing by committee. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Could, excuse me, Mike, could I interject something? Absolutely. Yes. Um, I think that I, it, it, I did not obviously attend yesterday, but I feel like part of the problem here that we're having is, Andy, I just keep coming back to what you try and um, rein us all in on. And, the decisions we make as a finance committee are, are, you know, are financial, like the budgets as presented, you know, are they within their budgets? Does this make sense? And I, I, I feel like what we're, and I'm not, I'm not against what we're trying to do, but I feel like what we're trying to do here is something beyond that. Um, we're making more of a statement. We're not saying to the police department, um, no, this is your budget that you presented us is totally out of whack, but, you know, blah, blah, blah. We're, we're saying something more than that. And I think that's, and, I, I, and maybe our, everybody's already acknowledged that, but I think that's, um, I, I just feel like that's where this, the, the, the difficulty is. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say that. No, I appreciate that, but I, I think, and I again, I get back to the uh, person who wants to offer the motion that uh, we did, we, we do have to face the reality that this was originally put forward to us as a motion to substantially reduce funding for the department. We did not think that that was um, appropriate and we did not think that that was uh, a way to achieve um, a goal of trying to address how policing is provided in Amherst and to explore it. And this is um, a way of, it's a, it's, it's kind of, it is kind of a political statement, but I think that it, it, we've been forced into that. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I totally understand that. I just, you know, I guess there's not really a way around that other than doing nothing, which I don't think is appropriate. We've got two people with hands up. Yeah, um, well, Sharon was one of them and Dorothy was, is the other. Dorothy? Um, first point is just purely grammatical. In the motion, after, after the phrase police department's budget, 
I think you should delete the will to recommend to the town council that the approval of the budget be made with the explicit understanding with the town manager that two upcoming anticipated vacant positions in the police department's budget not be filled. There's a recommendation that they not be filled, right. Um, yeah, I do agree. Um, a budget is a political statement. It's a statement of the values of the town. And certainly when I was given the community budget services to look at, I was totally shocked at the fact that we spend as a town so very, very little money under on human services um, in the health department. And so we're just talking about, I think, looking for perhaps a slightly different balance totally in consultation with the police department. Uh, I don't think anyone here has any goal of imposing or telling them how to do things, but trying to seek a slightly better balance um, in response to current events and very serious testimony from a very large group of people who were very representative of the town of Amherst. So I think it's fitting that we're doing what we're doing. Because I think that the other uh, aspect of it is that, um, and you've said it yourself, that the police department at times is making responses to situations that uh, people might be uncomfortable as it's a police officer making that response, and they would leave, and they would be more comfortable if it's somebody else. Um, making the response or that somebody else is with the police during that time and that we're, that's what we want to explore whether that's um, something that can and should be done. So um, I'm trying to see what the council motions are going to look like. So uh, Kathy, I'm going to turn back to you at this point. If um, there's agreement to the wording of the motion, are you okay with just um, taking up the motion yeah. on the floor? Uh, I, I am. It, uh, Lynn is uh, doing edit upon edit. So I was just going to say that as we've edited that very first paragraph, the actor. Yeah, this is, don't even bother to look. This is me. Playing the but if you go back up to the top one, we've changed the actor back to the town manager. So the budget not be filled until the town manager, in consult of blah, 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 residents, comma, has, because we're, and then it's has, because we've changed the actor back to town manager before we had, has fully prepared. And, and, and then, and presented and presented the results to the town council no later you know i just there was uh paul has become the actor so we just can't have a half got it no problem and it that may or may not be since it's such a long sentence it's still not liking it but um we now have we don't have to say not be filled for t six months, which is how Paul originally stated it. <laughs> but I'm f I am okay with this wording if, and I th think the adding paragraphs in the report will help explain why we're making this recommendation. This is Bob, just the, the second to last line there, at the very end, is presented two results that's not correct somehow Present, yeah. presented the results or presented the results. results right or presented yeah. the results yeah <clears throat> just well we have an editor-in-chief on the council in addition to lynn called mandy who usually goes through and figures out verbiage we don't. We have to just sit and worry about our own motion. Yeah. No. I think. I think it's all, to me. To me, that does what I was trying to 
talk about yesterday without the consequences Sonia was worried about where I came in and just said, um, cut two positions and um, then come back later and figure out what we want to do. And it was explained, well, we can't do that. Um, okay, I'd like to suggest that we decide which to move because we have two other orders we have to work on. Yeah, so I think that what we should do uh, is if people are comfortable with the motion, the first motion that's on the screen, that, uh, that we, uh, the one that's currently in gray, if, you, if that we go ahead, vote the um, order, and then just um, immediately have, have to make that motion. Okay, so this is the one you want to vote on. Okay. And this is the one that's on the floor, and I made the motion, and Pat seconded it. Yes. I'm ready, I'm ready to vote. So let's vote. On, so there's, we're ready to vote on that. Um, is Pat back? Ooh. Yes, she is. Okay. Yes, I am. Thank you, Pat. Okay. Um, anybody else have a hand up before we do? The other thing that I would like to do as I go through the motion, unless there's an objection, so I'm going to uh, want to be clear is that I would like to, add, um, during, as we're voting, also ask the three members of the committee who will not be able to vote if they um, would indicate whether they are voting yes or no on each of the, would vote yes or no on the, each of the motions if they could vote. And then we can report that in the minutes. Does anybody object to doing that? I think it's a great idea. Okay. So, um, I think that what I'm going to do is take it in order of the, um, let the uh, council vote first, and then I'm going to or, or, let me turn it around. I, I'll ask the others first. Uh, Bob Hegner, how would you vote on the motion on the floor to recommend the town council approve the FY21 operating budget as recommended uh, by the town manager according to order 2104B? I would vote yes. Mary Lou? I would vote yes. Sharon? I am confused. I am we, too. I am confused by this. We've never voted on anything else, and I'm feeling... I'm sorry, I've been trying to get my thoughts together. <laughs> um, I guess if you're going to ask me right now, I'm going to abstain because I'm not... I, I feel like we've never been asked to vote on anything before. In fact, we never were not allowed to vote. So to ask us how we would vote if we could mm -hmm. vote is very different than asking, you know, asking me for my vote. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, 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 and I'm not sure whether this has been discussed and I missed this or um, whether this was a new thing or um, this is how we would vote, but not that we are voting, right? Correct. Well, I understand that we're not voting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I um, I think under the circumstances, Sharon, you would then want to just either abstain or not vote at the moment. Wait and see. Maybe you want to vote at the end. It is a change. And I think that it came up uh, because several people have made the suggestion that it would be we have resident members of the committee who've invested as much time as any other members of the committee in this process. And while they're not allowed to vote, that the council uh, would benefit from knowing what their opinion is. I think but, in the past we've, we've said we support. Maybe that would be a better way to approach this, um, that I would support mm -hmm. rather than I would I, I support this motion. Yeah. I think that's a nice distinction. Can I say something? Yes. I'm, I have gotten very confused because what's grayed now 
is the motion to recommend that the town council approve the FY21 operating budget as recommended by the town manager. I thought we were voting on that the, um, the approval will be budget be made with the explicit understanding, blah, blah, blah. So I'm not sure what okay. I'm voting on right now. And I apologize, Sharon, for because we're we're talking about different things right now, but well, we were taking it in the order simply because it's what's on the oh, floor. Oh, I see what you're saying. If they were if they were comfortable with it, but we would recognize that both motions are uh, we're oh. taking. And, and if you would like to vote the first one, then I'm to remove this motion from the floor and which is the one that's in gray now yes okay right. and you as the seconder can just agree yes we're gonna just in we're not i can gonna... agree with that okay so sure. then we're back to this because the other one I got okay well then we'll we'll switch the order i that's i, I think you might have missed that because you're yeah, away i apologize i'm sorry because we said we would do them both, but it was a question of order, and then that came up. I can't make the train not go by. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, I'm wondering. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, um, I live in Cushman, right behind the Cushman stores. It's about to cross Pine Street. And so yeah. the northbound train is blasting its whistle just as it passes our house. <laughs> I've been living with that now for more than 30 years, so that's the way it goes. Uh, so, Kathy, do you want to make the motion that is yes. now in gray? I would love to make that motion. I move that to recommend to the town council that approval of the budget be made with the explicit understanding with the town manager that two upcoming anticipated vacant positions in the police department budget not be filled until the town manager in consultation with the town council and residents of Amherst has fully explored alternative options of providing services and presented the results to the town council no later than January 31st, 2021. Your second. Second. Uh, Still not unmuted. Yeah, I'm, I second it. Okay, stay unmuted and we'll go out. So we have a motion that's on the floor. I'm gonna, I'll come back and um, ask the support question of the um, resident members, but I'll, let's do the vote first. Um, so, um, Pat D'Angelis? Yes. Uh, Lynn Griesner? Yes. Uh, Dorothy Pam? Yes. Kathy yeah, Shane? Yes. And I vote. Yes. Um, and the question um, asking the uh, resident members if they would support this motion, Bob Hegner? Uh, I would support it, yes. <clears throat> Mary Lou, Talman? Uh, no. And Sharon Pavanelli? I am abstaining. Okay. And so, Andy, can I qualify that by saying it has nothing to do with uh, a community-wide, you know, discussion about policing, but I, uh, I don't support uh, tying up those vacancies. That, that is my issue. I will try and get that into the report. Um, so the vote is five to zero. We have uh, asked members of the uh, resident members of the committee. Uh, one has indicated uh, that he would support. One support uh, supports the goals, but not the means. In essence, um, does not nice support. Nice to phrase that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not exactly what you said, but it is. Uh, <laughs> More succinct. <laughs> and Sharon Pavanelli has abstained. Um, so then we're um, back to the motion that's in gray. Do you want to offer it again, Lynn? Yep. I recommend to recommend that the town council approve 
the FY21 operating budgets as recommended by the town manager according to order 21-04B. Is there a second? Second. That was Kathy this time who seconded. Um, so we'll go through the same, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll go through the same process that we went, just went through. And um, so Kathy, Shane. Yeah. Yes. Dorothy Pam. Yes. Lynn Griesmer. Yes. Uh, Pat Angelis. Yes. And I vote yes. And then uh, going to the uh, resident members on an indication of whether you would support this motion. Mary Lou Talman. Yes. Uh, Bob Hegner. Yes, I would support it. <clears throat> yes. Okay. So thank you for that. So I think, Lynn, if you could. Uh, we have one more. We need to res we need to recommend they rescind the one month. Oh yeah. I'll make the motion. Okay, go ahead, Kathy. I I move to recommend that the town council rescind the one month budget for July 2020 as approved by the town council on June 15, 2020. Second, DeAngelis. Okay, so any further discussion? Question, Andy, does that mean you can't spend any money the rest of this month or the new budget will, when does the new budget kick in right away? New budget kicks in as soon as the council passes it. Yeah. So is there going to be a gap between, oh, no. they guess they have to vote this recommend too. Okay. Right. Um, and Mary, Mary Lou, Sonia has rolled in July into the larger budget we're voting on. Oh, okay. Thank you. It's not missing a month. Okay. Yeah. yeah but we don't want to have to um, treat it for uh, accounting purposes and auditing purposes as a separate fiscal year. We want it to be um, that the audit and is of the full fiscal year. Oh, good. Thanks. So that's why the, that was. Uh, so uh, the motion on the floor is about um, that would come up for vote in the council after it's uh, um, if it approves the. Uh, FY21 operating budget, then it would uh, be asked to rescind the one month budget. Um, so I uh, have to go through again a roll call vote. Um, Dorothy Pam? Yes. And uh, Lynn Griesmer? Yes. Beth Angelus? Yes. Kathy Shane? Yes. And um, I would vote, I do vote yes. Um, and uh, uh, Sharon Pavanelli, would you support this motion? Yes. And uh, Mary Lou Talman? Yes. And Bob Hegner? Yes. <clears throat> okay. So I think that that then takes us to where uh, we have completed the action on the budget itself. And uh, we have um, two attendees, I, Lynn, I don't know if you can bring them into the room. Andy? Heard Mooring and Amy Rusecki, yes. Andy, we, don't we have, um, we have the assessor, we have a couple other motions that I thought we had to vote on. Yes, that's why I was raising the question. Uh, I, can bring, I can bring them into the room. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, yep, there they are. Okay, so um, Guilford, welcome. Okay. Here's Guilford held in reserve, Amy, Saki. Hello. Hi, Amy. So you can speak for any questions that anybody has. Um, 
Hi, Guilford. Uh, welcome aboard. Uh, thank you for your patience before we got to it. But uh, I think that we now want to turn to the capital um, spending order, which is has to do with um, four different issues, two water fund and two sewer fund issues. And uh, you want me to pull them up on the screen? Actually, they're all encompassed in this in the single order, and that's I think what would go on the screen if you have that order. Let me find that because I might have that order too if you don't. Um, it's uh, I have it right now. Okay, great. So let me see if I can do that. And I can't I may need to allow you to share, but I think you can. It's COF twenty one. You can share, Andy. Okay, so now we have the order on the screen, and um, no, we don't. You have to put the order in. We have your screen, but not the order. There you go. Really? Is now it, we have it. Is it on there. or not? I it's think it was there. just a time lag. It was a time lag. So what, we're, what is on the screen is the order that we're being asked to do, um, uh, whether we recommend to the council. Uh, this is a borrowing uh, bond authorization. It will require a two-thirds vote in the council. It is to borrow funds for four separate purposes. Uh, uh, Superintendent Mooring has uh, provided memos, which have been provided both to the count to, to the committee and to the council, explaining in four separate memos each of the projects that's entailed. Um, and I think that the, uh, right now, what we wanna see if, are there any questions about any of the proposals? And um, we wanna be able to, uh, be able to address those questions now and Lynn, Lynn, I see yes. your hand waving. Thank you. I, I want to just know that these items in the anticipated rate schedules presented to us earlier and we approved. Yes, um, they were approved in the rates and they are also um, as in, in, they're in the uh, budget book if you look in the uh, sections for the water fund and the sewer fund in the capital sections of each of them, uh, they, they are there. So uh, important to me only because the, yeah. we have then had appropriate hearings on all of that. Uh, can I just, I, I just want to pipe in on this um, because some of these don't hit only costs in the coming fiscal year. So they are not in the FY21 rate that we voted on. Um, and I, I had the, um, at least one of the water ones, I pulled up the, uh, the sewer one, like Centennial doesn't hit till three years out, Lynn, you know, in terms of- that, but when we were provided a set of rates, even though we only approved this year, we were provided estimated rates going out five years. Yeah, we were, and we were also told that those weren't necessary, you know, in terms of they could be smoothed out. So you were right, we saw, we saw a five-year schedule. So um, I, what I did find in talking to a few residents is they did not understand the five-year implication on where rates were going. They were so shocked by one year. I mean, we didn't talk a lot about, and rates go up 45% or 48% um, over five years, but it was in the document. It definitely was, yeah. So can I just, I just had one question on this um, that's probably a Sonia question rather than a Guilford Amy, is some of these, the um, debt service, the way it was shown to us in like on sewer, weren't, they weren't all coming in in FY22. If we borrow the money in FY21, we'd start paying off 
principle and interest. Um, so I, it just lining up, I, I can see a reason that you'd want to go out and get all of this money together because interest rates are so low right now. That's not totally so it was a question on the financing side. Um, if we're going out for the 18 million or whatever the total is. Um, Cause I did, I looked at the I tried to pull up sewer to see when, um, you know, they, it was a nicely done document we got on when um, the gravity belt, I guess the capital borrowing was showing up in FY22 so maybe sewer is not the right example. It's just centennial. So that that was just my that was my question. So you're um, trying to understand what you're asking. So okay. if we borrow now for centennial, eleven million, and we start paying off on debt, did the water rate we saw? for FY22 start to have to pay centennial debt. And I thought I remembered that centennial debt didn't start showing up till, you know, 23 or 24. I have to pull up water. Um, yeah, I'll have to go back and look at that too. Um, but just because we have this all together, I mean, this is the way the um, attorneys did it. Um, the first time they did it, they just put it all on graphs so you wouldn't have to go through all the, all the separate votes. Just because we authorize this right now doesn't mean they're all going to be borrowed right now. Okay, that is It won't happen until the projects start. I know Guilford's ready to work on a couple of these projects, but I'm not sure which ones yet, but it's just basically authorizing it at this point. That, you completely answered my question. So although we're, we're, we're voting them together, that doesn't mean you're going out to finance them all in this coming fiscal year. Okay, fine. We also have to have authorization and approval before we um, can fit these. Okay, that I was just, cause I went back and looked thinking, wait, I didn't think Centennial hit our rates until X year. Um, so thank you, you answered my question. Uh, Mary, Mary Lou. Andy? Yes. Second. Um, I, a question for Guilford. I thought that the uh, town meeting dealt with the gravity belt thickener uh, a couple years ago, and I thought you even demonstrated what it was. <laughs> I, I did. Um, that was actually the funds to design the gravity belt thickener. This is actually the construction installation cost. All right, thank you. Uh, other questions from the committee? Has uh, the one question that I had is on the Centennial Water uh, Plant. Um, has the um, work been underway with Ted and Howard? I assume they're the ones who are helping with the design. Yes, they've been doing the design. We're almost at the 30% design mark in our schedule. Um, we'll be there at the end of um, April, I mean, August probably. Um, and we're still looking for a end of FY21, end of FY21 uh, bid and award date. I think that there will be um, likely question in the council about uh, the, the piece as to whether there is, it's feasible to do any solar with the installation to reduce the cost. So as we move forward and design the plan at that point, once the plan's designed and accepted by DEP, then we can start looking at solar again. And then if we were to look at solar, we wouldn't look at it as part of the, we wouldn't look at the solar installation as really part of the um, facility because the solar that's gonna be required is gonna be an acre or two or three acres of actual solar field to run this facility. Um, a, a, roof, a rooftop system is not going to run the facility. So that would be a follow on to this project as we move forward more. Is the cost included in the $11 million? For, for solar? Yes. So solar will be a, a large, it'll be a large solar facility to run this plant. So we would be need more than $11 million to install it if we were to do that. But we would probably look at doing some type of RFP where we bring on a solar 
provider to help us with this and then go with that route instead of just buying outright solar panels and installing our own solar field. So basically we don't know the real cost of the Centennial Water Treatment Facility. We know the cost that we're expecting of the Centennial Water Treatment Facility as it will be designed and operated with power. We do not know the cost of getting alternative power such as getting a solar, solar power or some other type of power system. Right, thank you for the clarification. You know, at least when um, I think it was Amy who was asking, answering some of these questions when it came up with the council, the question came up is, would you design the plant differently in any way if you were trying to also, um, I don't know where we're going to be three years or four years from now of literally being able to run things off of solar. So the way some houses actually, you know, they put generators in and they're generating it. So it was a question on whether you put a solar person in while the thing is being designed, and does it affect it at all? Um, and I think that was left as a maybe yes, maybe no kind of answer. It, it is a maybe yes, maybe no answer. Um, the, pro the, treatment processes, the treatment processes have to be sound and accepted by DEP. That's the controlling factor in, in the design of the plant. So until that's nailed down, there really is no desire, no need to bring in a solar solar person. Okay. And I guess the only other question I have, I'm, I'm not questioning Centennial at this point, but if UMass doesn't come back in full, we, we still need this plant? Is the answer to that yes? The treatment? We we spent a, a large amount of money over the years developing what I'm calling now our water portfolio, our yeah. portfolio of water resources. And um, we would lose that. If we don't do something with Centennial, we'll lose that. And we'd have to spend more money to get it back as well as build a facility. Okay, thank you. I just want to mention that, remind people, this facility is actually not in Amherst. And it's not, it's not subject to the zero energy bylaw. That does not mean when we build the facility, it shouldn't be built to every possible specification to make solar, solar. to make it um, energy efficient. Um, but one of the reasons we would not probably even try to put solar anywhere near it is it would be dealing with another town. I, the other thing, and I said this before, um, I, whether UMass comes back or not, water, protecting your water resources is part of sustainability. And so we have three major water resources. We need to protect this one. And the only way we can protect it is if we build a plant uh, right. uh, to process the water before the permit expires. That's correct. If I can, I just want to, um, you know, specifically to Kathy and some of the questions you were asking, I, I do want to reassure you that we've had conversations with the consultant engineer in this, and they know that we want to have that conversation about solar. And so they're not going to do anything that prohibits the ability for solar to come in after the fact. Um, I don't quite know what that means because I'm not a solo per solar person, but they do know that they can't do anything that makes it so we can't add that on in the future. Um, so, so, you know, that, that has been involved in the conversation at least. Like the question. Yes, go ahead, Lynn. Uh, Dorothy has a comment. Oh, just a comment. Yeah, I, I, I guess that's really very important because the position that you cite it is is key in solar so that at least they would cite it facing in the right direction if they're putting any solar on the roof or whatever so that's good well, i think that the uh if i understood what guilford said correctly because of the nature of the land and the um, size of the facility and the demand and the amount of electricity it uses um you have to remember that this is uh, really 
pretty much on the edge of a, edge of, um, a very wooded area that it would probably be a solar field and not as you would do it on the top of a building. So I, is there other questions? Because if not, then um, I think we can um, move forward with trying to see if we have a motion and uh, to recommend approval of the order. So I, I'll make a motion and that's to recommend that the town council approve appropriation and borrowing authorization order FY 21-09 as presented. Is there a second? Second, second the Angelus. No, that. Okay. Um, any further discussion? And I'm going to go through the same voting procedure we just utilized. Uh, you know, the uh, Start with Lynn. Yes. Uh, Pat. Yes. Kathy. Kathy Shane. Did we lose Kathy? No, mm -hmm. she needs to unmute. Okay. I, just, I tried to mute myself and I didn't unmute. Yes. Okay. And uh, I vote yes, so that it's five to zero Dorothy. and the Dor question, you didn't come on Dorothy. Oh, Dorothy, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, I do. I vote. Dorothy, bam. Yes, I, yes. Uh, thank you. And in uh, the question on uh, whether they support uh, Bob Hegner. Yes, I would support. <clears throat> and Mary Lou Talman? Yes, I would support and agree with Lynn in terms of protecting our water resources. And Sharon Pavanali? Yes, I support. Okay, so. Um, Thank you to both Guilford and to Amy for having joined us. Um, we have one more and, vote. Uh, <laughs> do we have the assessment? Thank you very much. Aye. Do we have the assessor present also? Uh, no. Uh, okay, I don't think that it's necessary. I'm looking to see. I she explained it Liam. yesterday or the day before. Yeah, I think if you just put yeah. it in, Andy, it's fine. I'm seeing if the order is available easily. If not, we're just going to go on having problems. So I'm going to stop sharing. Um, what, what the order w is that is being asked for um, is was presented to would allow us to um, offer the, the um, additional um, or optional segment of the um, tax incentives for um, qualifying veterans, uh, blind and elderly. Are there any further questions about it? I think it was pretty well explained the other, uh, the other day when the assessor was with us. So, um, seeing uh, nobody asking questions, I think that the motion that we would be looking for is a motion that would um, recommend to the council approval of order 21-11 acceptance of optional tax exemptions. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Lynn, Lynn is making his motion. Great. We have a, who is the second? Kathy made the motion, Lynn seconded it. 
Okay. Uh, and uh, let's go through the same voting process that we went through previously. And then I think that we're pretty much Uh, we're at the end of our action part of the meeting. Uh, so, uh, Kathy Shane? Yes. Uh, we're voting. I said yes. And uh, Lynn Griesmer? Yes. Yeah, I heard you. Got it. Yes. Lynn is the yes. Um, Dorothy Pam? Yes. Pat Daniels? Yes. And I vote yes. And then the uh, question of uh, whether they support uh, Bob Hegner? Yes. <coughs> um, uh, Mary Lou Tomlin? Yes. And Sharon Pavanelli? Yes. Okay, so everybody said yes on that one. Uh, I think that that takes us through all of the motions that we need to pass. And the only other um, question that I have is, uh, I think there was some discussion earlier. You've seen the, or uh, hopefully had a chance to see the draft report. Uh, I, the draft report won't be going out until tomorrow. So that if you have additional comments or thoughts about it um, and get them back to me and or to, and to Kathy, we will consider them. Uh, Kathy and I will try and work together on putting together a final report. But I did want to include an opportunity if there are any comments or suggestions. And I tried to do as much of the draft as I could um, prior to the meeting so that at least there'd be an opportunity for discussion if anybody had anything that they immediately wanted to bring up. I just have I have a que I have a question. It's a question and a comment on the report. Um, for the appendices, we talked about uh, two appendices. One would be Mary Lou's write up of schools, elementary school, not all schools. And then one way of doing the Q and A's we sent in for additional information would be literally just to copy and paste the Q and A's in. Sean has put them in a document. I suggested that I work with that a little bit. In Lynn said she would prefer, she work with her general services sides. So I'm also okay with just copying the whole PDF in, which Sean already gave us. So I just wanted to know whether people wanted to edit it a little bit to make it more readable or just to copy it in. Because um, copying it in is really the easiest thing to do. I think you should just copy it in. Okay, so then, so there are these two appendices, and I'll just get those ready for you, Andy, so that you can append them when it's time to append them. And then the second was um, to do a link when we talk about budgets, and then uh, clearly right away to the budget document, the, the town manager's budget, but we also wanted to put a link, I think, to the library budget, the regional school budget, the elementary school budget, and Lynn had suggested the elementary school budget, there are two versions of it. One was before they had to make the extra cuts, that's a fuller document. And I will just, um, if everyone's fine with that, I'll just give you all the links to those, <laughs> or Sean can give me the school links, um, just so we can put them in if people wanna go look at the longer documents. Um, so that was the two things I saw aside from verbiage where we clearly need a couple paragraphs to pick up what we just did today on why we did what we did. Um, and that's, a, you've got placeholders for that. If you can provide links in the document, that's fine. I was also suggesting that the documents actually be put in the council's packet. Work. Oh, okay. Okay, so we can put the whole document in. Um, I know how to do hot links. I'm never sure whether in a PDF of a hot link works, you know, say the budget. I know. But you want to just add, literally just make sure they are in the packet. Okay. Yeah. okay. And I think that's the way Athena understood it, but I'll check with her. Okay, then she, I can actually just leave it to Sean then that he makes sure she knows what those are, you know. Are we talking, are we talking so about if, library? If we, want to, if we want to put library, you know, we want to put this fellow in, and it's oh, the actual document 
library, um, elementary school was a two piece. One, the two pager they sent to us that what was changed from their folding. And I, and then do we want to put regional schools in or we've seen regional schools? Uh, regional schools has been approved already. So, that's not to put regional so I don't think you want to put regional, you don't no. want to go back to regional schools at all. Uh, I think that no, makes that's, uh, that's fine. I'm not sure that uh, Lynn, do you really want to put the entire library budget in? I already sent the um, sent Athena the library budget and the schools to put into a packet. Okay, uh, not they're not appending them, Andy. They're just putting them in the town councilor's package. So it's, if somebody says, "Well, I don't know where that document is," it's right. Mm -hmm. It's nice and easy to get. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, any other questions? Bob, you had your hand up a minute ago. I don't know if you've taken it down. Yeah, I did take it down, but I, <clears throat> I, I don't expect anything to, to change as a result. I have a little concern that some of the rich um, insights that we got from the various meetings with the departments, department heads are kind of buried in the Q&A document, but they're not really highlighted. Uh, and for example, the one issue about the uh, the wastewater permit and the up to you know one million to multiple millions, it's there, but it may not jump out you know to the council members who aren't part of the committee. So uh, again, I don't expect, I don't think we should change anything given the the late hour, but I do. It may be helpful at the council meeting to um, you know point out one or two, you know, one or two of the big things just as a points of reference so that they're, they're you know, we can direct their attention to that. Right. Bob, Bob, one way of handling it, I mean, I'm willing to try it, is put this PDF in that has all the Q&As and just as a reader's guide, some of the big things that came out are bullet, 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 mm -hmm. you know, you know, just so that you don't have to read because even when they said the sewer then it said, one O N E to multiple millions. It didn't right. like one million to you know. Yeah. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So either way, because I think that was a big one. And then the other piece is when Pat did, when we talked about police and fire, the notion that we're do a, a staffing study on fire EMS. I mean that doesn't. It's it's not anywhere in the budget. It's uh but. So I can try, and we can certainly do it verbally. Um, yeah. Yeah, that might be the simplest thing is just have, you know, three or four key key things to point out. You know. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for bringing that up, and um, Kathy and I will work on it with that. And it sounds like Kathy has a plan. Um, I want to just ask. There's one um, one member of the public present if, if uh, uh, there's a request to make public comment to the committee uh, I want to offer you the opportunity and uh, so please raise your hand if you uh, if you would like to be recognized for public comment and uh, I will uh, go on to conclude business but I will um, I'm keeping an eye on it so that if you do raise your hand that I will uh, recognize for public comment. Um, so is there any other business that, uh, any other thoughts about the report or other business that people would like to bring forward to this committee? Because if not, um, I just want to say to all of you that um, this has been the most extraordinary budget year that I can ever remember in all of the years that I've worked on budgets as a member of the Finance Committee, as a chair of the Finance Committee, living through 2008, 9, and 10, uh, and then my years on the select board and the last couple of years on the council. I've never dealt with anything like this last year. Um, and I want to thank uh, Paul and Sonia and now Sean for um, helping us get through this. But I also want to thank all of you who've been on the committee for um, sticking together and putting an extraordinary amount of work in these last few weeks to not only 
deal with really an unprecedented budget situation with multiple problems, um, but to do it under an extraordinary timeline and to do it, um, and we actually um, were kind of put in a position, uh, not of our choice, but to even do it in less than 30 days allotted by the charter for the finance committee to receive the budget, review it, and uh, come back and make recommendations. Um, and uh, so I just thank all of you. Yeah, Lynn. I second all of that, and I also particularly want to thank our resident non-voting members who have set a precedent for how to serve the town of Amherst in a way that is so incredibly valued and provide us with insight that sometimes those of us that are in the weeds don't have the opportunity to see. And I especially want to recognize Mary Lou since be continuing on the finance committee and thank her for her patience in teaching us uh, the things that she has done over this last year in a way that has exhibited her years of experience and her patience as well. I want to thank um, Andy for his experience, his leadership and his humility in leading a group which has certainly some newbies such as me, um, for the amount of incredible leadership and work that he's had to put in. And um, also to thank Kathy as the incredible vice chair. Um, this has been really something. Well, thank you. With that, I think that we're done with our business. Uh, we have no further noticed meetings of the committee. I'm going to let it rest for a few weeks. <laughs> and uh, what uh, we'll probably do is um, at a suitable time uh, later in the summer, try and, and when when uh, Sonia has a year-end report available for us to look at, will probably be the right timing to do this. Uh, to to then get together, revisit the process, think about what we learned from the process and what we might want to do differently as a committee next year. Uh, but. Uh, we have no meetings currently scheduled and won't schedule one until Sonia tells us that she has a year-end report for us. Thank you, Sonia. So, Andy, I just, I have one, just one, I not do, that I want I'm to put... I'm going to interrupt to say that I need to leave. I apologize, but I'm yeah. going to I think so that I'll, I'll send you a note, but there was a, um, there's a possible, if we wanted to restructure the way we do water rates, we... Sending some options into Pittsburgh. So I just wanted to, if, if and when we meet again, I'm, I'm willing to work on a subcommittee to work on that and or we can figure out offline because I think there's one council member that isn't one of us who's willing to do that too. And, and Sean, this was just some ideas of variants we would want to see, not like this is the variant. Yeah. Yeah, and we're, just because just it relates, we're building that into our calendar sometime to look at that in the fall. So that's on our on our radar as well. Okay, and I I felt like you need something from us to react to, and then and then we can and then we can be back and forth on it. Yeah. Yeah, and Guilford's going to be involved, heavily involved in sort of bringing some ideas as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Not I'm not trying to prolong our meetings right now. <laughs> Thank okay. you. All. So with that, um, is there anything else? Otherwise, I think we're adjourned. Thank hey, you, everybody. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.